Hello everyone, today I'll show the solutions to problems 5 and 6 of round 185 of the Prairie Math League. For problem number 5, we have a diagram which shows two straight lines crossing at a point O, uh, and we wish to find the length of x. So, we see that there is a triangle here, and we know its side length, so we know this angle, theta. But this thing is theta is the same as this theta, so we know this angle and we know these two lengths, and that immediately ma makes us think of the cosine law, which states that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times sine of the corresponding angle, say, a, uh, or in our case, o, but it doesn't matter. Um, the point is we can write it out for each of these two triangles using theta as our variable here, and theta and x as the two unknown variables in a system of two equations. And uh, this gets us x squared is equal to 4 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 4 times 10 times cosine of theta. And 8 squared is equal to 4 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 4 times 5 times cosine of theta. And we actually don't need to find theta. It's e in our case, it's easier if we just eliminate this part here. The, thing, the key thing to notice is that this is actually just half of this. So we can make a really simple elimination by taking this equation and sub subtracting... Um, Two, uh, two times of this equation. And this gets us this equation here, which is x squared is equal to this but this bunch of numbers, which equates to 162. And now, we simply have x equals square root of 162, and squared, 162 happens to be 2 times 81. And as we all know, 81 is equal to 9 squared. So this is equal to 9 squared of 2, which is option choice E, and problem 5 is done. For problem number six, we wish to find the dis number of distinct pairs of real numbers which satisfy this scary looking expression here. Now, if we expand this, we get into quite a big mess, and uh, I haven't been able to solve it yet using this method. But there's actually a very neat thing we can do here. So notice how this says x plus y. This says x plus something, and this says, says y plus something. Well, it so happens that this plus this something and this something, if you add them together, they cancel. And if you add these two together, you literally get this thing. So what if we write this as a and b, where a is equal to x plus 4, and b is equal to y minus 4. Then this just becomes a plus b. So our equation simplifies to a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, which gets us a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Oh, wait, this is not, this is, this is false. Um, uh, ignore this part. But... Uh, a, a plus b squared is equal to ab, actually, because this, um, which gets us two a, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to ab, or a squared plus um, ab plus b squared is equal to zero. Um, now, this is it's quite obvious that this has no solutions, but if you aren't convinced yet, um, we at this point, we can divide by um, b squared to make this a, var a polynomial exp expression of one variable. We get a squared over b squared plus a b over b squared plus b squared over b squared equals zero. This is, this is after dividing both sides by b, b squared. Um, and this gets us a over b squared plus a over b plus one is equal to zero. And if we write x equals, or x is a bad choice, z equals a over b, we get z squared plus z plus one equals zero, which by the quadratic formula has no real solutions. And we're done. Thank you for watching.